Hello everyone, I'm Cody Farmer here in uh, lovely eastern Colorado at PLR Maintenance Building. This is a Pelican Lake project. It's a beautiful subdivision with open fields, pasture where you can ride your horses. And we are uh, privileged enough to be part of a design team uh, for this novel maintenance building you see behind me. So Halcyon Design and Architecture and Mainstream Corporation studied this building for several months, presenting the cost-benefit analysis to the board of directors and the stakeholders of this building, demonstrating why energy efficiency is important and how they can do it for many, many years, non-dependent on mechanical systems. And specifically, the science that we applied to this building is called Passive House in which there are several principles that we apply to any given set of plans in order to get phenomenal results. And here we are standing in front of one of the awesome results of Passive House Building Strategies. So the first thing you'll notice is that we've got super good quality exterior finishes. So we design buildings in Passive House methodology for about a hundred years. So we don't want anything that could potentially fail early. So we have low maintenance, a lot of stucco and stones and metals. And then the windows are high performance fiberglass. On the roof you'll notice we've got some natural daylighting coming in. This building's all set up on timers so as you walk in and out of it, the lights will turn on and off, which is part of the super energy efficient nature of it. The outside is lit up for community so that they can hang Christmas lights and things like that. Some of the things that are uncommon in this type of performance building is how to treat this whole entire wall assembly. This wall assembly is about 16 inches thick. It consists of a 2 by 8 with a 4 inch piece of foam on the outside, an OSB. There's more to it than that, but in a nutshell that gives us an R40 wall which we feel in this Colorado climate is necessary to endure the extreme weather differences. So from the foundation all the way up to the attic, there is a consistent envelope of insulation, meaning that this building is over 95% thermally broken, which is one of the three transfers of losses, conduction, convection, and radiation. Passive House Strategies takes care of all three of those losses, meaning that these type of buildings are really lossless, meaning they lose a lot less energy than the normal buildings do. Down here you'll see a nice metal protective covering. One of the other most important features of this building, now that we've kind of talked about the energy modeling that uh, we presented to the board that demonstrates the cost benefits, we talked about the thermally bridge-free or the thermally broken structure. We're now going to talk a little bit about the ventilation system and how the fresh air comes into this building. Normal buildings these days are built as negative pressurized, meaning you turn on a bathroom fan or you cook in the kitchen and your building depressurizes. In Passive House strategy and methodology, we want the inside pressure the same as the outside pressure, and that's very evident in this building. Featured here is a Coolerado technology, which is an ERV hybrid. Its first nature was actually to be a non-direct evaporative cooling technology that took off about 10 years ago, and I have the pleasure of seeing it here on one of our projects. The Coolerado not only is an energy recovery ventilation system, but it's the only one that can cool a building too, as effective as air conditioning. And it's not just specific for dry climates. Coolerado has perfected the technology to the point where the evaporative cooling does not require extra moisture in the building. So again, this building, although it's evaporative cooled technology, will not contain any moisture on the inside. That's a very great thing for uh, evaporative cooling, not to mention it's about 75% plus more efficient than normal air conditioning. So again, the pressure on the inside of this building is going to stay the same as the outside of the building. Next we'll talk about air tightness. The average commercial building and residential building are only going to have about this much insulation. And in, in a building that's advanced wall, we're actually adding this much more. So this is about an R40 envelope and code only requires about an R20 for your, your walls. The other part of advanced envelopes, healthy buildings, is, is how we handle the inside VOCs. And it's important because we bring in outside air to flush the building. Paints, fumes, plastics, cooking, all of those are volatile organic compounds. Some of them are very bad for our health. We feel like we really want to ventilate the spaces that we design. So one of the ways we do it is, as you'll notice in this room, there's going to be paints in here, all sorts of chemicals and things like that. We're going to exhaust this room. So when the door is closed, it's actually not going to want to interact with the main space. 
it'll actually pull some fresh air through a cross vent and that way all the smells are going to be out of the building in this room. And the same goes true for our bathrooms, showers, and kitchens as we, we bring all that moisture, all the smells, which could be volatile organic compounds, such as in case we're here where we'll have gas and paints, we send it out the building. We don't let it run around our houses or our buildings. So what you're seeing here now, this is one of the small heating devices you will see in the PLR maintenance building. And please notice how delicately the box, the intake and the exhaust air functions there are attached to that air barrier with proclaimant tape, an air tightness tape. This is a 93% efficient modine unit and believe it or not, only two of them can heat this 4800 square foot area. Uh, and normal buildings again would take about three times the size of this system to heat this building alone. And here we've done it again with about a quarter of the size that would need. So one of the first things people notice is how echoey it is in here. And that's partly because the thickness of the wall eliminates a lot of sound. So these type of buildings are actually much, much more quiet than the average building and they're also more healthy because of that air tightness factor. So one of the neat things is that you can actually use window sills now for plants uh, and books uh, and even seating areas in many of the designs. So this is actually the office area and it has the same principles too. It has a small ERV in here keeping the pressure inside the same as it is outside. And it's got a little hotel size heating and cooling unit that will just be used minimally to heat and cool this particular space. One of the things I love about this building is the fact that they considered the outside environment, they considered the people who live in this community to the point where they, they didn't want a maintenance building that couldn't be approached. So in times of troubles or any tragedies, this building is designed to have people come to it to the point when people are riding their bikes around the community, they wanted people to have access to a restroom if they wanted. So then becomes the design challenge of how do you have an airtight envelope with an outside bathroom and you don't want people to enter the main space. And so this is doing just that. So this is uh, outside the building technically, but it's inside the envelope. So it's part of the installation of the main building, the airtightness of the main building, and the ventilation of the main building. So here again, you'll see an exhaust and a supply on the ceiling there so that this room will continuously have fresh air, no smells, and it'll still be losing hardly any energy in order to make that happen. So it'll stay just as comfortable as the building in there, and it still acts as one thermal envelope, all for the community.